As you all know, cakes start with butter and sugar. I've mm. rambled on about this for, <laughs> for years now. But you've got to make sure that you cream the butter and sugar really, really well. Because if you don't, what happens, technically what happens is, the sugar in the oven turns to a syrup. And that syrup will weigh down the cake, so it'll That's be really it. sodgy. I'm going wrong. Because you said a few weeks ago about your flat pancake oh, cake. Oh, flat. Didn't you? Terrible. Flatter. <laughs> so that's what you need to do, is just make sure you really whisk the butter and sugar. Right. So it, you'll see this. I've, already, I've whisked this before, just before we started, but it's really, really pale and fluffy. Right. And that's exactly what you want. You need it to be like that. And then you're going to add to that the eggs. Now, a lot of people, when they're making cakes, get really worried about the batter curdling. Mm. And I've said this again before, but I'll reiterate it. The batter curdles because there's fat in the egg yolk and there's fat in the butter. Right. And if they're not precisely the exact same temperature, mm. they can't emulsify. You know when you make mayonnaise? Yes, of you've course. got to pour the... Well, the... I don't, but yeah, I've you know, heard, heard of it. Casually on, the, on a Sunday, <laughs> you know. But that, that's what happens is if it doesn't... If they're not the same temperature, they can't emulsify. And if you don't right. go slowly, it can't emulsify. So, But it doesn't matter with the cake batter because you're going to bang it into the oven. Well, not bang it, but gently place it, yes, I hope, good. into the mm. oven. And what that will do is when it, when it goes to the right temperature in the oven, it'll temper itself up, it'll be fine. Right. So don't worry. A lot of chefs say, you know, mask it with some flour. That doesn't do anything. No. It, you know, don't worry about it. Butter's mm. curdle, life goes on. It That's does, indeed. Motto. And you're just adding eggs a little just bit, eggs, a little, little bit at a time. time. I'm going to yeah. add the last two then. Right. And what I've got there, I've got, some, I've got two 20 centimetre sandwich tins. Right. They're loose bottom ones and they're greased and lined with a bit of baking paper. Sure. So make sure, that's another thing people do is they, they don't prepare the tins. Mm. So you've got to, you must prepare the tins and then you won't fail. Get right. all your ingredients weighed out. Like when we do it on the telly here, we've got everything weighed out. I think you should do that at you home. You should. That's, yes. that's what restaurants do and exactly. chefs do. You know? so, and then you're not sort of, oh, I haven't got that and run into the cupboard. That's and the it. And the phone rings <laughs> and you've got batter all over the stuff, exactly. you know, you've got to get organised, that's the key. Right. So, flour. People, it's debatable whether you should sieve flour or not. Mm. I say when you're making a light cake like a Victoria sponge, just put it through a sieve, there's no harm. Sure. That way you, you make sure it's not clumpy. If it's mm. old flour, it might clump up. Right. Might be a few little weevils in there. Yes, we don't want not on, not on the Lorraine kitchen, though. No, indeed this not. This is all fresh it's flour. Strange. Very fresh. <laughs> so you just fold that flour in. Right. So, folding, people get a bit stressed out about folding as well. Just just get on with it, you know. Just fold it in, and once it comes together into a, to a dough, a cake batter, you've got a perfect batter. And you don't need to be too delicate with it. It's not like you're doing a magic trick. You've just got to yeah, get yeah. in there, get it sure. to a batter, get it done as quickly as possible. Because if you overwork the flour in a cake, mm. this, this, is also, this also creates really flat pancake That's cakes. That's what I've been doing. Gluten. You yeah. glutenise the flour, yeah. and then that way it won't rise, because it's just too rubbery. So that's what you want that's to avoid. That's what I've been doing. So don't touch it too much. Just okay. let it do its thing. Right. So I'm going to divide that in between the two cake tins. Mm -hmm. Now, again, make sure these are greased. You can dust them with flour if you want to, but I don't really think that's necessary. Right, OK. If you've got a good non-stick and you grease them well. And those wee ones that just pop up are so much easier, aren't oh, they? Oh, brilliant, yeah, brilliant. they're much better. And all you need to do to get them out is pop them on a smaller vessel, like a, an upturned tin like that, and yeah. just bang them out, and it's brilliant. fine. So they go into an oven, so smooth those out a little mm -hmm. bit. And then they can go into the oven. Now, this is a great thing. If you're just starting off with baking, here's yep. a great tip. What you should do is start with a Victoria sponge like this. Yep. In a fan oven, it's 160 degrees. That's 180 normal mm -hmm. oven. And they should take between 18 and 22 minutes. Right. So that's, that's the range of, of time. Oh, okay. If they burn, then the oven's a bit hot. Mm -hmm. If they're not quite cooked, your oven's a bit slow, a bit cold. Right. So you get to mentally calibrate your oven. Yeah, do you do <laughs> that? If you, do you oh, know your I'm oven really well, yeah. I sound really geeky, don't I? I'm mentally calibrating my <laughs> no, oven. No, not at all, because you've always... got to get it right. Yeah, you've got to yeah. know what, what you're working with. So they go in the, in the oven, right. the mentally calibrated oven. And try and don't open the, the oven door before okay. the end. That's exactly yeah. it, because if you do, what happens is you change the temperature in there and the cake just is unstable. Ah. It's not mentally unstable, but sort of cake, cakey unstable. Yes. Yeah. So these is what they'll look like. I've taken those out. You let them cool in the tin right. and then turn them out. And I'm going to okay. put some strawberry jam because we'll be, oh, you know, we'll be a bit more traditional with this. So some strawberry jam I hope on you there. made that yourself. Of course I did. <laughs> yeah, last night. I was, up, I was up all night making strawberry jam just for you. So on with the strawberry jam. And then some people like to put cream on it, a bit of buttercream. I don't think that's necessary, you know. Right. Just get the strawberry jam on there. And then I'm going to put that on top, and then I'm going to make the creme chantilly. And I'll tell you how to do that. It's really easy. Mm. It's just you whisk the cream with some icing sugar, a bit of brandy, and a vanilla pod if you want to use vanilla right. pod. If not, just vanilla extract or the bean paste. Mm. And then once it comes to floppy peaks, floppy peaks, floppy not peaks. stiff peaks. OK. Stiff peaks is for meringue. Right. Floppy peaks is for cream. Because if you make stiff peaks with cream, you get butter. Ah. And what we all love a bit of butter. But not with the cake. With that the cake. Wouldn't be good. Not with the cake. Not no, with the cake. No, 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 no. So I've got to just pop that top on. Right. 
And I'm going to sift some icing sugar over the top of that, put it oh on my cake goodness. stand, and then when you come back, we'll have a slice and a cup of Yay, tea. Yay, that sounds perfect. And we'll have a good giggle over some cake. Excellent. Thank sound? you. Thank you, George. It sounds perfect. Thank, Thank you. you very much.